Hi, I'm the Rap Critic, and this episode was a Patreon request by Tyler Shayna. And if you'd like to request a song for me to review, as long as it charted and has a music video, go to my Patreon and I'll review it. Although, maybe I should have been clearer as to where it should have charted before I review it. See, I I'm American, so my American brain just assumed everything that's gonna get requested will be from the American rap charts, but uh, apparently I have quite a few British grind fans as well. And one of them wanted me to check out Tiny Tempa. Now, I don't know much about Dude, only that he sort of came off to me as like the British B.O.B. Like, you know, skinny cat, inoffensive, commercial ready type dude. Even had the quote, inspirational chart hit written in the stars, which I actually do remember liking, but unfortunately I wasn't asked to review that one. No, I was asked to review Miami to Ibiza. His big hit in the UK with Swedish House Mafia, another one of those EDM electro house type dudes who was huge in the early 2010s but disbanded after like barely two albums. But anytime I try to think of any of their songs I might remember, I always end up confusing them with David Getter or something like that. Honestly, I think I might have only heard that Don't You Worry Child song, you know the one from like 2012? But I'm assuming after listening to this song, I'm not missing that much that doesn't need to be supplemented with expensive music festivals and copious amounts of drugs. Now usually this type of music is known for having lyrics with oddly intense emotional energy like Titanium by David Guetta or the aforementioned Don't You Worry Child, but whenever it doesn't and it's just another party song, for me it completely falls flat. Like with this song in which Tiny Tempo does the easiest thing a rapper could do for a rhyme scheme. He just rhymes letters. But she wants Steve's AP, watching QVC. I put her number in my bold BB for my JVC. Look, I know this isn't supposed to be lyrical gymnastics or anything, but just rhyming letters for most of the song? That's literally grade school lyricism. I can only imagine Swedish House Mafia listening to the verses like, Ayo, I to the B, to the C, to the D, E, What the hell? I could have done this! Why the hell are we paying him? And I mean, why not do it themselves, even if it ends up sucking? Have you heard their biggest hit? There was a time I used to look into my father's eyes. These guys obviously don't have a problem with being untalented on the microphone by themselves. Wear suspenders and some PVC, and then I'll film it all up on my JVC. This dude just rhymed PVC with JVC. Well, I guess I never thought of rhyming two letters in a row with themselves. Oh man, that, that's some next level laziness right there. But okay, let's get into what he's actually talking about. She says she likes my watch, but she wants Steve's AP. Alright, so the song's about this girl who's super materialistic, right? I mean, the first thing he says about her is that while she likes his watch, what she really wants is Steve's watch, which is an Audemars Piguet or something like that, which... Can I just say, who even has a watch anymore? Like, is this still a thing? I feel like watches should have become completely obsolete with the invention of cell phones that tell you the time as soon as you look at them. I mean, you don't see people going on road trips with huge maps in their cars anymore, do you? Well, I guess maps were never made by Hublot or Muller or any of those other designers who make their worthless hunks of metal cost thousands of dollars just because a name is on it. Pfft, leave it up to rich people to buy something that's completely unnecessary just because it costs more money. Well, then what's the point of telling people the time if I can't also remind them of how rich I am? And she stayed I pull hours watching QVC. She actually watches QVC? Like, I get it. He wanted to characterize this woman as being a gold digger by saying that she watches a channel that's literally a 24 hour commercial for expensive shit, but who the hell watches QVC? Th that's not a thing people actually do, is it? QVC is the type of channel you only watch if you're either in a nursing home, in a waiting room, or like the batteries in your remote died in between changing channels. Seriously, does QVC even have like shows? Is there actual programming other than, like, slowly spinning useless shit? And who is this woman you're describing? It can't be the woman portrayed in the video, who comes off like a young, wild, and free type of chick, swimming naked in the ocean, living life to the fullest. To say she sits at home and watches QVC all day, she sounds more like a bored, middle-aged housewife killing time before she has to pick up the kids. She said she loves my sons, she put my MP3, and so I put her number in my bold BB. Wow, that's a pretty low threshold for girls you'll give your number out to. Like, if she has all your albums on vinyl, even your mixtapes, okay, that's a down-ass chick, but giving your personal information because a woman paid 99 cents for a single? That just feels desperate. Unless this is indicative of just how little people are paying for music nowadays. You're hot and you bought my lead single? Oh, you're coming to the VIP, baby. I bought a black BM. I'm sorry, what? Is that two rappers who have abbreviated BMW to just BM? I think the girl posts a BM. Am I the only person who grew up with the letters BM being short for bowel movements? Oh, and by the way, I know a lot of EDM is infamous for its drops, right? Well, yeah, this song doesn't even really do that right. Like, let's listen to a drop that's done well. <laughs> It reaches 
the end of its buildup with something epic sounding and drops. Now, I understand it's dubstep and this is house, but the principle is still the same. You end on something epic or important with a good buildup preceding it, and then drop the more energetic beat. But here... Scene one. one. Everybody get in your position. Pay attention. And listen. See, you're already losing me here because it sounds like you're just throwing in words to fill up space. Like, pay attention. And listen. Like... One would assume if you're paying attention, you're probably already also listening. We're trying to get this the one tape, so let's try and make that happen. And I understand that it's supposed to be about filming a sex tape, but the attitude with which he says these lines doesn't really fit that mood. He sounds less like a horny devil about to get this hot chick on tape, and more like a bitter director trying to hurry up and finish a shoot so he can go home. And annoyed directors, that doesn't really get me hype. Like, the drop itself is okay, but the build-up is just as important. And when it's handled like someone who sounds like they didn't realize there was like four more bars they had to fill up before the drop actually happened, so we had to slow down his flow to make it all fit, kind of takes away from the energy. Well, overall, I give it a three out of five. It's just that perfect middle ground of a rap song. But hey, if you'd like to see what I thought of the actual album that this is from, uh, check out this episode of our show, The Gone Off Podcast, where we review Tiny Tempest's album, as well as talk with special guest Steve Respect about rap music stuff. Well, I'm the rap critic, and... Finally got some cool-ass merch.